should you should you should all leave. <laughs> um, so, Pastor Charles asked me to uh, give a sermon, and uh, he's been asking me for a while. And uh, finally, my wife convinced me that by accepting, I would be helping him out. So, this is my act of love. <laughs> so today, I'm going to be talking about. Um, Love is a huge topic, but I want to focus on one aspect of love, which is love is a verb. First of all, let's uh, ask ourselves, what is love? And there's basically two definitions. One is the noun, an intense feeling of deep affection. But even the verb, love, <coughs> is talking about the feeling. Feeling a deep romantic attachment to someone or something. I love chocolate. I love sports, I love, you know, whatever, you, you name it. It's basically focusing on the feeling of love and not enough on the action of loving. So today I wanted to talk about that. So what is a good example of love? When uh, we look at the um, crucifixion of Jesus, Jesus has been tortured, he's been ridiculed, he's been humiliated, he's been rejected by all his companions. He's basically alone and dying and in great pain. And whilst he's in that situation, what does he say? He comforts people. He's asking Heavenly Father to forgive the people because they don't know what they're doing. So, when I think about that, I think that those, that act of true love, because I'm sure if we ask ourselves, how was Jesus feeling at that moment? Mm. He wasn't really feeling so great, right? <coughs> Can we all agree on that? <laughs> but yet, he was, he was practicing he was expressing true love, asking God to forgive those who were torturing him. And by doing so, he changed the course of history as a result. In my opinion, this act of true love was the most impressive example of the enormous power that love has. Think of all the Christians throughout the ages that have surrendered to this power. Why? Because people are moved to their core by the fact that Jesus was able to do this. It puts him in the category of extraordinary human being that he was able to respond in this way given those circumstances that he was in. So, in one sense, Jesus' act of true love on the cross was more meaningful than the Sermon of the Mount, which is impressive. But nevertheless, Jesus is in a relaxed setting giving a talk, telling people to love one another. Great! How many of us can do that? I'm doing it right now. <laughs> Does that make me a master of love? No! It's more impressive than Jesus is healing sick people. It's more compassionate than Jesus treating prostitutes with dignity and respect. It's more understanding than getting those who are about to stone a woman to death to look at their own sins first. These words capture the most powerful force in the universe, and that is the force and the power of love. But how was Jesus able to do this? How was he able to respond in this way? He gives us a clue. Earlier on in his life, somebody asked him what the most important law in the Testament was. And he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And then he says, the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
And when I read that, I thought, that's interesting. The second is like the first. In other words, they're almost interchangeable. How do you love God? By loving people. How do you, wh what do you do when you're loving people? You're loving God. It's almost the same thing. But Jesus obviously was a master of love because he had God. He had a, a unique and personal relationship with God. <clears throat> so here is a definition of love given by Scott Peck from the uh, book The Road Less Traveled. The person who truly loves does so because of a decision to love. This person has made a commitment to be loving whether or not the loving feeling is present. If the loving feeling is present, so much the better. But if it isn't, the commitment to love, the will to love, still stands and it is still exercised. So, now that we know the definition of what I mean by love is a verb, it's an action, it's a decision, it's a discipline, it's a conscious choice. It's like a, everyone is born with muscles, but we need to exercise in order to become strong. So in order to, in order to be good at loving, we need to become, we need to make a conscious choice and a decision, a commitment to do so. So what's the problem in this world? Eric Fromm, from the book The Art of Loving, he says, most people see the problems of love as the problem of being loved rather than to love, to be, cap to be capable of loving. So most people's concern becomes how to make themselves more lovable. Samyang Moon says, do people prefer to give or to receive? The majority of people like to receive. The fact that a person wants to receive is related to their desire to grow and become big. How much you are able to put inside yourself determines how much you grow. <coughs> However, if we only receive, what happens? If we pour water into a glass that is already full to the brim, it spills over. That means it's time to give. And if you don't, the water gets wasted. <clears throat> Until we are mature, we all want to receive. But at a certain point, as we mature, the time comes to give. So, if we think about the secular world, the society, we're very much obsessed with the feeling of love. We're, we're very much obsessed with wanting to get things in order to make ourselves feel good. And that includes not just toys, that includes get relationships or people in order to make ourselves feel good. So we're talk we are obsessing with the feeling part and not so much with the giving part. So the question is then, in part three, how do we grow and deepen our experience of true love? How does that happen? And Jesus gives us a clue. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. In other words, going back to that clue that Jesus gave us, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength. How do we do that as fallen people? How do we love this abstract being? Because let's be honest, for, for, our, for many of us, God is, a, is an abstract being. Okay, It's almost like for an orphan, they may have some understanding or some kind of concept that their parents loved them before disappearing, but that concept or that thought isn't really very useful or helpful. What they really need is an active, live parent in order to take care of them. Right? So Jesus is that intermediary. He was the Messiah. He came to show us an example of love, how to love, in order to be able to feel the love of God. So we need to learn how to love. So, <clears throat> Jesus is saying this. So, unfortunately, <laughs> it involves sacrifice. So love is a verb, it involves the action of doing something. 
So, <laughs> if any man will come after me, yes, yes, let him deny himself. Take up his daily cross, his cross daily and follow me. Oh, gosh, these are not very encouraging words. Sun Myung Moon, if you really want true, unchanging love, yes, you must realize that it is not going to be gained in a very relaxed fashion. Oh, I thought I could get that sitting on my couch playing computer games. No, sorry. You have to go to extremes, and there you will find it. But once you have it, you will have unperturbed happiness even at the bottom of hell's misery. I think actually there's different levels of love, there's different levels of feeling, and we can go for mediocre, we can go, we can go for the hilltop, you know, the hilltop kind of love, like, yeah, I'm comfortable, I'm feeling okay, you know, I'm not sick, I'm not dying, you know, I got a job, you know, I get some money, I, I spend some money, and I have a TV, and that's okay. You know, we can go for that as our life aspiration <laughs> to feel okay. Um, but I think what Sun Myung Moon is talking about here, he's going for it all the way. I mean, he's talking about Mount Everest. If you want to get to that level, that intense level of love, the experience of the feeling of love, the ability to love, then this is what you have to do. You have to go to extremes. If you desire love, the secret of gaining it is to pour out yourself, your life, your love, your everything. You must remember the most wonderful fact, describes it as a wonderful fact, that love starts from sacrifice, giving of yourself, investing yourself, your life, your everything. So, <laughs> it calls to question, what is the point of all this hard work and sacrifice? What are we, what are we doing this for? And Jesus tells us, I am, in, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. So the source of love God. Jesus is explaining, this is where I'm at. I am in the Father, the Father is in me. So, we are interconnected, in other words. Sun Myung Moon is explaining, your whole purpose for reaching the center is to meet the heart of God. That experience is so overwhelming and exciting, you cannot disappear there forever. You must emerge again to embrace your family, your society, the nation and world. It goes back to what Jesus was saying. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength. That experience is so exciting, you cannot disappear there. You have to emerge again to embrace your family, society, nation and world. So with one hand on God, we can then engage in give and take action to love the society around us. But without holding on to that source, that's where we run into trouble. That's where we find that there's only a limited amount that we can do on our own power. It's like the difference between being hooked up to a plug when you're on your computer to running on your battery. Yeah, you can run on your battery, yeah, three hours, four hours, five hours, whoops, now it's shutting down. And that's often what we experience when we're not plugged in. Eventually, we shut down. We can't do it anymore. There's nothing left. We're dry. We're empty. That's it. I'm going to my room. Go away, everyone. The world. So, once the heart of God dwells within you, no matter how physically lonely you may be, you will be filled. That's a nice thought. To always be filled. If there is a center of love, you can give love unselfishly and without limit, and you can become a subject of love. You must clearly understand the ideal world will start from you as an individual when you are with God's love. I am in the Father, the Father is in me. It's all interchangeable. You can put into practice in your daily life in human relationships. Love will start from you reaching out to all things as it originally started from God reaching out to you. So these, sorry. So basically, in conclusion, our experience of love, the, 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 the thing that we're craving for the most, can only come from sacrifice. That's what it comes down to. And by investing ourselves 
that this is the only way we can empty ourselves and in the process of emptying ourselves we can be filled until we empty ourselves we cannot be filled and the love that's in the universe the love from God from people will be wasted on us until we empty ourselves and and find a way to, to create room for that to happen in our daily life. Please, uh, let's, uh, please uh, join me in prayer. Uh, Heavenly Parent, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity for us to hear these words from Jesus, Sun Myung Moon, and from all the wise people of history who are helping us to understand the nature of love, who are helping us to understand the purpose of love, and who are helping us to understand what we can do in our daily life, the sincere effort that we need to make in order for us to be able to experience your love to a deeper and deeper level. We know it's not easy, we know it involves sacrifice, Nobody likes to sacrifice. It's just part of our nature. But if we can understand the purpose of the sacrifice, it will make the sacrifice more sweet and more able for us to do. So I pray that we can be encouraged by you, that we can be encouraged by each other to give more of ourselves to invest more of ourselves, to empty more of ourselves so that we can be able to experience more of you and more of the love that's in this universe. Heavenly Father, this is the love that we crave for, this is the love that we want, and this is how we can accomplish and achieve that. So we pray for your guidance daily, and we offer this prayer in the name of Jesus, in the name of true parents, in the name of God, and in my name, Aju. Uh, please uh, discuss with your neighbor um, or sit there and meditate.